This is Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. If you have an existing estate plan or are in the market for one, Todd Lutsky is here to answer your questions and help you plan for a later life. Ask Todd is presented by Cushing and Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 35 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Visit CushingDolan.com. Now, here's Todd Lutsky. And we are joined now by Mr. Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. We call the segment Ask Todd because you get to ask Todd your questions about your estate plan. So we got the phone lines opened up. The line here, the number here is 888-205-2263. So please get calling so that you can ask Mr. Lutsky your questions. Again, about your planning or maybe about your lack of planning and what you need to consider. That phone number again is 888-205-2263. One more time, 888-205-2263. Mr. Lutsky, how are you? I am doing great. How are you? Struggling. Uh Uh-oh. It's always something with you. Well, I'm trying to throw a party. Yeah? Got to get balloons for a party. I agree. Price of balloons is way up. (laughs) Inflation is a real problem. I'm sure it is. So I'm working through it. Todd, let's talk about the state of look back periods when it comes to irrevocable trusts these days. First, for those who aren't familiar with it, explain what a look back period is. And then can you give us the state of play? Sure. Uh, So a look back period is sometimes confused with a penalty period or a disqualification period. Uh, A look back period is... When you are trying to protect assets from the nursing home, so that's just one aspect of the planning that we're talking about today. So if you were trying to protect assets from the nursing home and you put them into an irrevocable trust, if you've done that kind of planning, it takes five years. You can't run into the office today and say, Todd, my dad or mom's going into the nursing home tomorrow. And and you know what? I want to put all these assets in an an irrevocable trust. It, It won't work because... It needs to stay in there for five years, and then you can get sick and go to a nursing home. So that's what we call advanced planning. Now, there are some ways to get around that uh, in a last-minute situation, but not many. So you want to get it started. Now, that's very different than a penalty period. A penalty period or a disqualification period is this calculation that they do, and I don't mean to bore you with it, but it's basically the value of the asset that you transfer for less than fair market value. So I take, you know, a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff and either give it away to a child or put it into a trust. Either way, you have the look back period of five years, but this calculation would be that number divide by a average cost of nursing home in the state number, which of course varies by state. In Massachusetts, it's just the round numbers. It's, it's like $10,500, give or take, uh, is, the, is the number you would divide it by. So that gives you the number of months, right? So it would be like 10 months, give or take. If it was 10,000 divided by 100, you have 10 months. So there would be a 10-month penalty period. While it seems shorter than the disqual than the uh, look back period, it's not because the begin date is only after you apply for Medicaid, get denied because of the transfer. Then that ten months would begin to run, so it's not the way to go. Whereas the look back period, regardless of how much you transfer, you know at the end of five years, it's over from the date of the transfer. So. Complicated, I understand, but Mm. that's why you need to do advanced planning to get these things running. Talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan, if you have a question you'd like to ask Todd specifically right now on the air, the studio line here is 888-205-2263. That phone number is 888-205-2263. It's a great opportunity for you to speak with Todd Lutsky about your estate planning questions. That phone number again is 888-205-2263. We're going to take a quick break here, but when we come back, we're going to go right to your questions with Todd, so make sure that you get all queued up here. That phone number one last time is 888-205-2263. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky every Wednesday at 1030, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. 
You're listening to Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. Uh, we, we do still have space for one or two more callers. So if you have if you got a question for Todd, this is your chance. 888-205-2263. That number again is 888 888- 205-2263. But uh, for now, let's go to Margaret in Kenny Bunkport. Margaret, what's your question for Todd Lutsky? Yeah. Yes, good morning. Um, my mother has a uh, trust mm-hmm. that owns an LLC that owns a house. Mm. When she dies, um, the trust is dissolved and the children become the trustees of the LLC. It, we always thought that when real estate is sort of changing but not changing, but now I think we're learning that there's not a step up value and that the trustees will, the new trustees will have to pay capital gains. Is that, does that make sense? Um, and I'm going to say that, that it really doesn't. So uh, I have a couple of questions that will need clarification that without having the documents in front of me may make this difficult to answer. But let me, let me ask you this. So, the trust that's in place that your mom created, is that revocable or irrevocable? Uh, presently, it's revocable. Okay, great. Well, then that answers my question. So I can assure you that it sounds like the the house, I, I, I hope the house, was the house a, a primary residence? No, the Good. summer home. It was a rental? Good. Um, well, no, just, just summer. the summer house. We don't rent it. That's fine. Um, so... The house going. The house was deeded into the LLC, and the shares of the LLC were owned by the trust. Correct. Yes. So I can now assure you that that if that trust is revocable, when mom dies, that revocable trust will be included in mom's estate for estate tax purposes. Meaning she did not give it away. Obviously, it's in a revocable trust. That's her revocable trust. So it's still her asset. So when she dies, it's included in her estate, which will give you the step up in basis. I say you, I mean the beneficiaries of the trust. So if the trust says when mom dies, the assets go equally to the kids, that asset would be an LLC stock certificate, okay? Because it's still in the LLC, but the stock certificate would pass to the children. The value of the property in the stock that represents the stock certificate was increased to fair market value on the date of death. Therefore, if you guys sell the house shortly after mom dies, your capital gains tax will be zero. So that is a given. Uh, And then I wanted to just correct one thing that the trustees of the trust is not going to be the LLC. So the trustees of the trust might be a child. The LLC will continue on. The LLC does not dissolve even though the trust might say, take the assets and distribute them out to the kids. If the only asset in the trust was this stock certificate of the LLC, then that's going to go out to the children. The stock, the LLC remains completely intact, and the children would own the stock of the LLC with a step up in basis. I like the LLC idea, so just in case you kids decide to keep renting that property, you will have the creditor protection that the LLC provides in the event there is a tenant who sues. So I think that answers your question. I hope it does. And I'm excited to say that that's planning, folks. But the guide we're giving away this month is about folks who haven't planned and may find themselves in a nursing home situation, may find themselves entering that facility and not knowing what to do, yet faced with a $15,000 check per month. Please don't write the check. This guide, Long-Term Care Planning for Procrastinators, allows you to learn about how countable assets can become non-countable assets last minute, how a home or a vacation home or a rental properties are treated, how life insurance is treated, Assets are treated differently and can be saved last minute, and they're treated differently if you're married versus single. The guide explains both. And also, even if you've done your planning, don't tune out. 
because you likely have left assets outside the trust and those would need to be protected when you go to the nursing home. This guide offers something for everybody. Call and get it, 866-848-5699 or legalexchangeshow.com. Again, 866-848-5699 or legalexchangeshow.com. Got another one for you here, Todd. Let's go to Derek in Springfield. Derek, what is your question for Todd Lutsky? Good morning. My question is, me and my brother, uh, my father passed, inherited a house. I'm the executor, but he wants to stay in the house, so he's going to buy my half out uh-huh. in monthly installments over 15 years. Is, that is not considered a rent or an income for me because he's buying his half of the house out, correct? Uh, yeah, it's not considered rent. That That's true. Um it, it would be a sale. I assume you're going to do a purchase and sale. It sounds like it's going to be some kind of an installment sale uh, is what I'm hearing. Um, I don't know if, if you want to go, you know, have them. I mean, obviously, doesn't want to get a mortgage and you could just get it all in one lump sum. So I think what you're asking right. in, indirectly is, you know, let's just say for fun that the house is worth, you know, $500,000 and divide by two is two fifty. So he needs to buy out your interest for two fifty. The two fifty that you would receive, let's say it was one check, because you inherited the property, like I was just explaining to Margaret, because you inherited the property and it was included in his estate, you guys have a step up in basis. Okay? So what that means is your receiving two hundred and fifty thousand dollars will result in zero capital gains tax for you to pay. If you receive it in one lump sum. Now, if you receive it over time and it's an installment sale, then I'm wondering if arguably are you getting interest along the way, meaning since he's not paying it up front, is each piece of the check that you get going to include a portion of return of principal, which is not taxable, and a portion of interest, which would be taxable. You know, so you're going to have to, I would sit with your accountant and learn how you're going to treat this if it's truly an installment sale, uh, since you're not actually getting the $250,000 in my example up front. So, but overall, and, and this is a great lesson for folks, overall, the the fact that you're getting a step up in basis is is a win on the capital gains tax front. So keep that in mind. Todd, anything else to add when I know we were talking a little bit about uh, look back periods in the prior segment. Anything else to add in terms of maybe how that look back period should inform when the proper time is to do that kind of planning? Yeah, I think the way to look at your your look back period is, you know, when, when do people think about doing you know, long-term care planning because the guide, again, is about the procrastinators, the ones who who haven't done it. Uh, You know, 60, 65 and over seems to be a good age to me. Again, it's a function of where you are in your life, too. Everybody's life is a little different and where they are in their their life is, is also important. But, yeah, 60, 65, I would say start thinking about it. Why? Well, because because it's a five-year waiting period. So to me, if I'm 65 and I can have this five-year waiting period behind me by the time I'm 70, I think that's a home run. Not to say that if you're 75 or 80 now, not to plan, please plan. Getting your five-year clock running is always better than not having it running, is always going to offer us options that you wouldn't have if it's not running. So that's the answer. Get it running. Mr. Lutsky, thank you so much for joining us today. Always a pleasure. Thank you. The views expressed in this segment are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Armstrong Advisory does not provide any legal or tax advice. Please consult with your legal or tax advisor on such matters. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. This has been Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky has been presented by Cushing and Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 30 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Call 800-393-4001 or visit CushingDolan.com. Don't let an unexpected nursing home stay take away your wealth and prosperity. Cushing and Dolan are experts in elder law, and if you're not prepared to handle the increased costs of nursing home care, your assets may be at risk.
According to Genworth, the average monthly cost for a private room in New England could double by 2040, so don't delay. Call Cushing and Dolan today and request their new guide called Long-Term Care Planning for Procrastinators. In it, you'll learn strategies that can help you protect your assets and allow you to enjoy your later years. Don't put off today what you might really need to do tomorrow. Call Cushing and Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and get your free guide called Long-Term Care Planning for Procrastinators. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request it online by visiting LegalExchangeShow.com. 